Good evening, good evening, good evening. I'm just testing that this is okay. I've had to move my camera because the beautiful, gorgeous sunshine was so bright that it made half of my face look completely white, which is a strange look anyway, but um, it's not one that I wanted to um, have you forced to sit through um, for the next 15, 20 minutes or so on this Facebook Live. So. For those of you that haven't met me yet, I'm Jenny Kovacs, nicknamed the Queen of Being Seen. And these Visibility Made Easy episodes are really here for you to, um, to make visibility, make your, the, you being consistent with your visibility really, really super duper easy. So um, I'm just going to grab something. I'm experimenting because I'm on a white wall. I want to see... Um, how I can play with some lighting. So I'm just going to do that while I show you the inside of my hand. I'm not sure that you can see. Not sure you can see the difference actually. Maybe it needs to be a bit darker. So without any further ado, let me take that off and stop playing with the camera and uh, crack on into a bit of easy visibility. Now, if you're the sort of person who um, you might describe yourself as an empath, um, you might need to recover your energy. You might even in this journey of being visible and being consistent, feel slightly overwhelmed. If this is you, then this episode is definitely for you. And I know that so many of you in here um, struggle with this. So where did this come from? Um, quite recently, I was speaking to a private client of mine. And as I was speaking to them, they were telling me, um, that they have got a full-on um, sort of segment of work coming up, full-on. And one of the things that they had observed with their peers and people that have kind of gone before them was that when they were doing a similar piece of work to what this client needs to be able to do, that they were getting into overwhelm, which for them was okay. They kind of expected that. Um, they also expect to be busy, but what they didn't expect were... The, the literal breakdowns that these people were having. They were publicly having these big meltdowns, um, you know, posting things out there on social media um, quite publicly. And it concerned this client of mine. Um, so one of their concerns was like, how can they go through this big visibility journey, be visible, be consistent, stay visible, and still keep their sanity, basically? So um, there are a gazillion different things you can do. And for those of you that are watching this live, feel free to hop on and type your questions in the box below. If I'm still live, I will more than happily answer them. If not, I will answer them on a future live. And by the way, if there is a particular subject when it comes to putting yourself out there and getting your work or your message out, maybe you don't feel that you're 100% clear on the message that you want. Sorry, I can see bits of my hair sticking up on this white wall. Um, so I'll keep fiddling with it. Um, maybe you are um, wanting to know how to be more visible generally on social media. Maybe you want to know how to be more visible as a speaker. Um, it could be that you want to take your work into the corporate arena. You just want to be seen and you want to be heard by new people. Um, any questions that you've got, by all means, um, type them in the box below. And if I can't, you know, if we're not live anymore and I can't cover them live um, and answer them live, then what I will be more than happy to do is to dedicate a visibility made easy to your question. If you're a bit more private and don't want to type a question below here, then what I would suggest you do is um, I would suggest that you go over to the Queen of Being Seen page, send me a message there. It's a private message, but um, if you could do it to my business page, not to my personal page, because I get so many messages, um, I sometimes miss them. Um, send it over there and I will dedicate an episode. And if you want to remain anonymous, that's fine too. I will, you know, I even if you don't tell me that you want to remain anonymous. I never say, oh, Jenny Kovacs from London asked me this question. Um, so I would love to be able to do that. That's what this group is for. Um, I wrote a post um, early hours of this morning. I actually started at five this morning. And um, yeah, I wrote a post which is it's due to be published on my page soon about why I love the Vibes Tribe so much, why I love you Vibers, why I love what you do and how you do it. So. With that said, I'm going to go through um, five things that would really help your um, visibility to be good, to be successful, to be just how you want it. So um, 
the first thing is um, I'm going to say, can you remember that expression, liar, liar, pants on fire? Do you know that we tell so many untruths, so many lies to ourselves on not even just a daily basis, but sometimes an hourly basis? The other day, like, what do I mean by that? The other day I was speaking to somebody who um, started off their sentence with, I'm such an idiot. And then followed it with something perfectly normal, like I forgot to do such and such and such and such. Quite a human thing to do. And I was like, hold on a second. You just said, I am such an idiot. You're a liar. <laughs> You're not an idiot at all. You just forgot to do the thing that you needed to do. So the reason that I share that as a story, the lies that we tell ourselves, sometimes there are reasons that we do things which are really excuses why we don't do the things we want to. We want to start a seven figure business, but the reason that we give ourselves is we don't want everybody to hate us for having money. You know, how do you know that that's true? Um, or you want to get out there and, um, you know, spread your message or spread your mission in the world more. But people think that you're too woo-woo and people don't do woo, -woo. and you know all of the things whatever comes after that it's a lie we tell ourselves and if we keep in that circle of lies then what happens is we end up um, not doing the things that we want to do not achieving what we want hey Maureen thank you for watching um, we end up getting in um, a kind of like this vicious circle of things that we want to do, things that we want to do in our business, things that we want to do with our business, people we want to reach, but making up stories. Um, you know, I hear it all the time. I do a lot of work, not only in the entrepreneurial world, but also in the business world. So, um, you know, corporately at conferences in different industries, you know, some of the industries I've worked with just over the last few years, um, food and beverages, hospitality, um, travel, um, who else, who else, financial services, Kind of, I wouldn't say obviously, but that was the last background that I came from. Retail, um, health and well-being, you know, and I've worked with some quite big companies and um, well-known um, companies. Some I can name, some that I can't. Um, you know, British Telecom was one of my clients. Bombardier, the transportation company, has been a client of mine. Um, so lots of different sectors and different segments and people often say oh but i couldn't take my work into this place because so what i would say to you is um we tell ourselves lies all the time and we've got so used to telling ourselves lies about why we can't do things or why we can't expand into a market that we actually don't hear it anymore um there's this caribbean saying my mum used to say when we were little about somebody telling so so much lies they can't hear the truth <laughs> you know we do it to ourselves we go into automatic pilot and we take ourselves out of the game because we keep telling ourselves that there's something that we can't do so your only job is not to beat yourself up not to go oh my gosh I'm a liar or anything like that but just to notice when you say things and go hmm but is that really true so tip number one liar liar pants on fire and I'm speaking to myself on this as well if you find that you are telling an untruth about something or telling a lie about something just stop and go oh my gosh that's interesting is that really true is it really true that corporates aren't interested in spirituality is it really true that if somebody has been unwell for a long time that they can't get better is it really true that a woman um, who is approaching her 50s, all right, give or take three years, um, cannot be taught how to do makeup by her younger makeup artist cousin, who I must be getting close to being one of her worst clients <laughs> ever, like nightmare clients. I don't know what I'm doing with makeup. Um, and she's going to help me because I want to be able to um, help you too. So where do we, like, where do we say something to ourselves that's not true? Your only job is to notice it. Point one, if you remember it from the lie, lie, pants on fire. Okay, so point two, in any given moment, we have choices. We have choices. We can choose to do something, we can decide to do something. So point two is choose or decide. I don't mind what goal you're setting, whether it's a visibility goal or something else. Maybe it's a monetary goal, maybe it's a health goal, maybe it's a wellness goal, maybe it's a relationship goal. Whatever is on your wheel of life um, that you are setting goals or setting intentions for doing or wanting to achieve, then make a choice, make a decision. Um, Maureen says I look good. Thank you. I'm, um, I'm using, I'm gonna use more of the aid of makeup to look even better. <laughs> But thank you. I graciously receive your compliment. So 
what about those of you that are saying, what do you mean we've got a choice? Um, and I have left my other phone over the way. Um, so I know that Alan sometimes doesn't get the notification of these. So if you are watching and can tag Alan, so the at sign in Alan, A-L-L-A-N, um, Alan Roberts, let him know that I'm live. He might be out anyway, um, but at least let him know because I now can't add anyone to, um, to watch these as I used to be able to. So that said, um, point number two, choice. Choice and make a decision. Now, I'm going to share a story with you, and my nephew would probably kill me for saying for sharing this story because he's now 16. But when he was about four or five, he had this really cool Spider-Man Spider -Man outfit. It was a cool Spider-Man outfit. And we went out for the day, and he had his face painted like Spider-Man. And we came home, and he had sweets, but dinner was being cooked. And um, as we were waiting for dinner to be ready, it was like five minutes away, he said... I want some sweets. Uh, oh no, he wanted to eat biscuits. I think it was like chocolate biscuits or something. Um, I want to eat biscuits. And um, his mum said, no, 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 no. You, you can't have biscuits. You're about to have your dinner. And you know that face that a child pulls the moment before they're about to burst into tears. He kind of went. <gasps> and all of a sudden his mum went, no, no, stop. If you cry, you're going to run all your, your Spider-Man makeup and it's going to smudge and it's going to come off and it was hilarious watching a small child in that moment go <gasps> and all he could see out of the spider-man makeup was these little eyes going like thinking oh my gosh yeah that's true mum's got a point if i cry i'm gonna like smudge my makeup and with that he in that moment stopped now that's kind of a, a funny example you know, I've been through, you know, a few of life's ups and downs, and I remember being um, thrown in the centre of grief, very personal grief, very raw grief. And it was, it always amazed me that some mornings I could wake up, like, whichever, whenever I woke up in the mornings, I kind of like was at a level start again. But some mornings I woke up and I would rapidly decline into like a bubbly, watery mess. Some mornings I would wake up and I would feel okay, you know, I'd feel quite good. And then I would kind of like go on a downhill spiral. Some mornings I woke up and I would go on that downhill spiral really quickly. And this is gonna sound so strange, but I became intrigued as to how I did that or why I did that. Why would some mornings I be okay and other mornings not? And when I, you know, this is like a personal experiment um, that I did over like a matter of, I think it was about 12 weeks, I really, observed and noticed this you know I had funerals to attend in between all of this and stuff to deal with that was just like I don't want to deal with this now but somehow I had the ability like somehow to come out of this grief normally to make other people feel better when they said oh how how are you doing and pulling that, that face um, and other times not and I became intrigued and what I realized was let's take the emotion just strip the emotion back let's take the heat out of the situation for me personally, I became curious enough to observe my own feelings and know what could start me on the downhill spiral. Now, I'm not saying that if you're going through grief or any sort of emotional or um, any kind of trauma of any type, that you have to be happy, happy, happy. I'm not saying that at all. And um, What I realised for myself was that I always had a choice. And in what we do, if we're setting our goals, trying to be more visible, trying to get ourselves out there, we always, in every moment, have a choice. We can choose to be overwhelmed. We can choose to be intimidated by someone else that we perceive is doing better, bigger, brighter, bolder. Or we can choose to stay in our own lane and to mind our own business and just keep going with what we've got, you know? Um, it's the best thing that we can do. So in any given moment, we always have a choice. And that always starts with a decision. Decide what you want to do make that choice and stick to it. It's as simple as that. So the others, um, I'm going to talk about, um, uh, mm, yeah, I'm going to talk about the people that you surround yourself with. Not everyone will get the mission that you're on. Not everybody will um, understand why you want to do something. Not everybody will agree with why you want to do it. And actually that doesn't matter. If you're on a mission, you are on a mission. And your only job is to keep on your mission. You know, we've got Shelley in here who's got the positive gossip movement. 
she's promoting and some of you are promoting for her as well you you know some of you are looking to expand your businesses some of you are looking to get out of the nine to five and start your business some of you are still thinking of the ideas some of you wait until kids go to school some of you are looking at exponentially growing people you know one of my clients recently um who has got a, a i would term it an sme so she's got a business with you know um staff and she's looking to grow that business so we you know we have um different people that we surround ourselves with and sometimes the people that we surround ourselves with get really scared. They don't see your vision, they don't see your mission, they don't see your life purpose, and they want to protect you. They want to keep you safe. And they'll say, whoa, 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 don't you think you should slow down with that? Do you think you should do this thing? Do you not think you should do that thing? And before you know it, we can take ourselves out of the game for there. This is why I brought the, this um, Vibes Tribe together. You have all, you know, I know so many of you have met up offline, you can support each other, some of you in contact behind the scenes, and I love that and I encourage it. I say, do more of that, do more of it here, do more of it outside. Do whatever you need to surround yourself with the people who get it. Because apparently there's only 1% of people in the world who get this, the rest of them don't. And the rest of them are frightened. They see things that happen to big corporations and wonder how you as a one person business can keep going. They see how you've incrementally grown and maybe you've changed in your behaviours and it intimidates them. So, you know, really um, stay on track, stay in your lane. I'm just going to come back to your comment, Maureen. You said that's powerful. Observe your own feelings for what I was saying before. Um, we have a choice. It is powerful. And the thing that I really want you to get, and um, for those of you that are listening to this live or on the replay, is, you know, I'm not telling you how to feel at any given moment. I'm speaking specifically on that piece about the experience that I had. You know, I, I was going through a really horrible grief, very raw grief, um, one that I wish no mother or mother-to-be would ever have to go through. And it was one of the things that I, I think kept me sane. I don't know where it came from. I don't know who told me to do it. I just became curious and it really, really worked. So um, I share that in case any of you that are listening to this might need it. On this week, which they're dedicating to mental health awareness. Um, but I would like anyone watching this video now or on the replay to promise me something. Even though this week is dedicated to mental health awareness, can we make, all make a promise that we're going to keep being mindful of mental health awareness 365 days of the year and on a leap year 366 days of the year? I think it's really important and it's great that it's highlighted in a week, but I also feel like it's something that should be highlighted every single day of the year. We don't, we shouldn't get to pick and choose when we're helpful and um, when somebody needs us and when not. So, you know, if you... Um, are a therapist or you are a counsellor or you are able to support anyone emotionally even as a coach or even as just a, a gentle pair, pair of ears you know come into this group and say this is not what I do in my business or this is what I do in my business and you know if anyone needs support with this specific thing or in this area of life I'm here to support so absolutely and, and Maureen is promise promise and yes promise absolutely any time you know do reach out I've had people reach out to me complete strangers people that I've known people in the vibes tribe before and wherever possible I will always try and support and if I know somebody who can do a better job of that I'll always um, pass that on too so let's look after each other 365 or 66 days of the year so First thing was um, the lies that we tell to ourselves. Second thing was the choice stroke decision. Observe in the moment, you'll be able to um, start to realize where we, where we have a choice, even if we're in the middle of something. Um, and you know, the people that we surround ourselves, they say that we're the sum of the five people we surround ourselves with most. This is not about dissing and, um, and shaming and you know, ri ridiculing um, your friends or your family. This is about making choices about the people that you spend your time with so that you can feel how you need to feel to do what you need to do. This is really important when it comes to visibility specifically. Um, fourth thing I wanted to say, for those of you who are um, empathic, sometimes you might feel like you're having a tough day and there's this um, kind of feeling that you want to withdraw and retreat from the world and a lot of my empaths say withdraw and retreat from Facebook and actually the thing that I want you to know is that that might be the thing that you need to do, nothing wrong with that at all. One of the things that you need to know, and I just want to remind you, is that sometimes you will feel awful because you are taking on someone else's emotions, someone else's feelings. Um, it was funny because when I was speaking to a client recently, I said, um, 
I used to do a lot of um, training sessions corporately and um, be, you know, as an employee, not as a business. Um, and even sort of before I started them as a business, has any of you ever had that where you've either been responsible for a group of people corporately or you've been in the room with a group of people and you go in the room and like everyone seems okay, but you just feel kind of damp, down, worse, worse, worse. I remember one particular day, after about half an hour, I was like, you know what, I'm not feeling that great. I feel really thirsty and I just don't feel brilliant. And then one of the guys went, yeah, we went straight out to the pub last night after the training and we didn't get back till four. And someone went, yeah, and Tom didn't get back till seven. Wonder where he was. And they were all absolutely blind drunk for that time. Yet I hadn't had a drop to drink and I felt hungover because so many of them did. And once that was spoken, then they all started to kind of like admit how they felt um, and how they, you know, how they were feeling, what they were doing. Um, so if you're empathic, know that sometimes the doubt or the fear or the, you know, whatever you're feeling doesn't belong to you and f work with somebody who can help you with ways of dispelling that, dispersing that. So, um, Oh, okay, Maureen, thank you for your message. Um, your advice last week was very useful in keeping me calm in my presentation. Ah, I wanted to know about that. You have to come in and do a live and let us know how you got on. Um, I'd love to hear about that. I love hearing about presentations, but thank you for joining. Um, so, so finally, I'm trying to read my own writing there. Um, yeah, thoughts. Um, what did I write on there? I should have brought my glasses. Um, yes. Sometimes you feel like you don't have time to think. It's become a part of our language. Don't have, I don't have time to think. But actually, you do have time to think. And the reason you have time to think is because when you're getting anxious, when you're worrying um, and doing all of that, that's exactly what you've been doing. So choose the pool in which you're going to put your thoughts in. Are you going to use your think time to think about and worry about stuff? Or are you going to use your think time to think yourself into the thing that you want to do? in your future you've there got a choice too so i hope this has been helpful for you thank you so much for watching thank you so much for sharing and um, i'd love to hear your comments and stuff in the box below let me know if any of those resonated with you um, if one in particular resonated with you what will you do who will you reach out to um, and yeah hopefully this makes your visibility journey just that little bit easy remember i'm here same time every thursday every week sharing visibility tips to make visibility easier for you. By the way, this is an extract from the vibe system. V being visibility, I being the impact, B being the biography or the story that you tell about yourself or your business, E being about the energy, and that's where this comes from. It's almost like the mindset, the energy, the way to go forward, even when it gets tough, the coping mechanisms, the way to get it all done, the way to stay out of overwhelm, the way to stay out of burnout. So those five pieces, I mean, there are deeper pieces underneath. We talk about segmenting your week, but that's basically um, where they come from. So if you could do with any help on that, then um, do go over, send me a message, book an appointment, let's schedule a time to talk, um, because I know that the people that I get to work more closely with and people that um, go on to some of the programmes that I run are able to delve deeper, dive deeper into what they need. And of course, in the visibility vibe system, S is about two things, selling yourself and selling your products or services and speaking, how you speak, whether it's in meetings, whether it's from a stage publicly, whether it's on webinars, whether it's on Facebook Lives, it's um, all things speaking. How do you articulate what you do and the value that you bring? So for those of you that are watching this on Thursday evening, um, Friday, tomorrow in here, we've got our live Insta training with Estelle. I'm so excited. She really is the Insta queen. And um, she had some really great news this week, which I won't do a spoiler alert. But um, if you want to be able to get yourself out there and more seen on video, then, um, sorry, on Instagram, then you definitely want to watch tomorrow now. If for some reason you can't catch us live, go over to the Queen of Being Seen page, look at the pinned post, respond interested or go in and I will make sure that you get access to the replay which is only going to be out for a limited amount of time you know um, Estelle has given up her time her energy and her oodles of knowledge to help us to be able to be even more visible um, on Instagram but most importantly to start to really grow your Instagram without having to buy likes you know 
having people that really like your work um, show up and she, she gives you so many different tips and hints. You know, in the, in the two weeks since I've met her, um, I have increased my Instagram following by about 40 odd people. Um, and I don't say that lightly because some people have dropped off, but it's um, the numbers have gone up nicely. So I'm really pleased with that progress. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know if there's any topics you want me to cover on Visibility Made Easy. Just pop them in the comments below. And I look forward to reading your comments on the playback. Lots of love to you. Bye for now.